This is the Wealthy Wednesday Show with your host, Lucy McMonagle, a money manifester, coach, and public speaker who's on a mission to helping you create more wealth in your life and business. This show will inspire and empower you with various topics and has expert guests. Let's welcome your host, Lucy McMonagle. Welcome to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle. Today, I am so excited. We have an incredible guest. But before I tell you about our guest, let me tell you a little bit about the Wealthy Wednesday Show and why you should be listening to today's episode. The Wealthy Wednesday Show is designed for creative women entrepreneurs that choose to tramp in their business to have more money, more freedom, and more joy while making an impact on the world. I'm your host, Lucy McMonagle. I am one of the top influencers in my field, and I am an Abundance Breakthrough coach, a speaker, and author. Please be sure to keep an eye out for my upcoming book that's going to be launched in 2017 for Magical Money Manifestations, a practical and spiritual guide to more money, more joy, and more freedom. So today we have an incredible guest. His name is James Wober, and he is the co-founder and director of The Art of Heartful Living, an international leadership and personal development training institute that empowers thought leaders and entrepreneurs to fully bring their brilliance and gifts out into the world. James, welcome to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. Thank you, Lucy. It's wonderful to be here. Wow, you have this incredible foundation, and you're the director and the co-founder of Heartful Living. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but you reach internationally to train up leaders, to train up entrepreneurs, so that they can truly bring their work into the world to make that global impact that's been put in their heart to make. Mm -hmm. Wow. Could you tell us a little bit about, you know, how, what is the unique approach that you and your institute actually applies for consulting thought leaders and entrepreneurs? Yes, yes, I'd love to. Um, there are so many things that are important skill sets to have as a leader, as an entrepreneur. And there, there's many different modalities and ways of bringing that out, and those are all valuable. What we focus on at Art of Heartful Living is more of the underlying patterns that we hold inside of our own being that oftentimes come from our families uh, that are impacting the ways that we step forward into the world, uh, the ways that we think about money, the ways that we approach one another when we're doing a business call or, or, or so forth. All of those are influenced very deeply by the internal patterns that we have. So we focus on that uh, primarily. Wow. And it's those internal patterns, which I personally have had many internal patterns that were challenges for me from growing up in Provost, from going to four different um, or three different grade schools and two different high schools. And, and all of these impacted how I thought about money, how I thought about relationships, how I thought about creating businesses and being an entrepreneur and you go right in there and you talk about how to eliminate these patterns. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. And we have a series of tools uh, based a lot on energy healing work and family and systemic constellation work for those of your audience members who've heard of some of those forms. Uh, and then also some other skills, heartful communications and other things. And use the, these pro proprietary uh, tools, uh, toolkit to really help people go deeply with all of those elements. Like you said, I think that all of us have lots of patterns that, that are part of our lives. And it's really uh, about finding a way of being with those in a different way so that we can be more productive and really open up to our fullness and our brilliance out in the world. That's so true. And, you know, all of us do have patterns. And some patterns are good patterns. Some patterns are bad. Yes. Depending on your perception. Can you tell us a little bit, how does somebody even know if they have these patterns running in their life? Right, right. Well, I think a pretty fair guess is that all of us have patterns, you know, uh, so it's more of a matter of, 
of, like you said, it's how do we use the pattern? You know, something that is uh, a challenging event, a traumatic occurrence that happened to us or happened to our family, that can cascade down to a family and impact us very much. Um, it, once we start embracing that and really recognizing when the pattern is working in our lives and learn tools so that we can shift things when the pattern is coming up, then the pattern starts becoming a tool. It becomes a gift that really benefits us in our life. And I, I know that the more and more that I talk to other people, and I know for myself, when we have uh, dynamics that have been traumatic for us, those, those traumatic experiences actually end up informing the exact work that we bring out into the world. It makes us more empathetic. It makes us more um, stronger people. In many ways, it, it oftentimes guides us to exactly what we're meant to do in the world. So I, I agree with you. I, I don't see uh, patterns as being necessarily bad, uh, just something that we get to work with, you know. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of the patterns that I've taken is to end domestic abuse and to end the violence that is against women or been made against women. And when I launch my book, 30% of all of those profit proceeds will be going directly to a charity that's going to work towards finding solutions so that that's no longer acceptable. And, but if I had not had that pattern developed in me, if I didn't have a continuation, if it didn't cause pain within my family and, and within me, I would have had a totally different route that I would have taken. Right. And so utilizing the patterns that, that have been a challenge when you were younger to become your greatest ally and your greatest benefactor when you're older. Yeah, I love that. That's great. And so important because that's, that makes it so that we really uh, know more deeply than maybe anybody else how to, how to help our clients because we've gone through the experience ourselves. Exactly, exactly. And that's the most heartful way is to know what we've gone through because now we understand. And Absolutely. being able to truly see somebody that can have an impact on you because they've been there is important also, in, in my opinion. Yeah, totally agree. So you, you're, the name of your company is Art of Heartfelt Living. Could you tell us a little bit on how did you come up with this name and what does it mean to you? Yeah, so, yeah, so Art of Heartful Living. And uh, the, the name really kind of evolved over time because we were finding, especially with the energy healing work and with the constellation work, that it's really about cultivating a way of being inside. Uh, it's not, there, there are t uh, uh, tips and techniques and things like that that you learn as part of it. But really the most important thing is embodying the work yourself. And so uh, oftentimes clients don't necessarily want to hear it at the very beginning, but it's not a silver bullet. Uh, when we're doing work, it's really about connecting and, and being willing to go in deeply to these deeper places uh, where the gifts are. And, uh, and really, so that's, that's what the art of heartful living is. It's really being very, very present, connected, heartful, uh, uh, being willing to feel and connect with all the things in life, both our own wounds, challenges, but also connecting with other people and their, their dynamics that are going on as well. And from that place, we, we're coming from a, a, the ideal state of growth, of healing, of opening, and we can hold that for ourselves and for the people we work with. Wow. Now, you mentioned a couple of times of constellation work. Could you tell us a little bit about what that is and what are some of the tips that, in, that individuals can do to start utilizing some aspect to prepare to start looking at options such as art of heartful living? Yeah, so yes, that's a, that's a very common question because constellation work sounds like it's related to astrology or, or something like that. It doesn't have anything to do with that. Those are fine modalities in and of themselves, but um, it, constellation refers to different points within a system. So what we're really doing with constellation work is we're taking a look at what are the patterns that formed in different systems that we've been part of, our family systems, our communities. Uh, we can also work with organizations and with businesses. And so with, with a lot of the work that we do, there's many different formats, but what we're doing is we're having representatives step in, and it looks like role modeling, even though it's much more than that, but stepping in and representing different elements that are related to an issue that a client is presenting. So for example, all of us 
uh, you know, want to achieve success. And uh, money is a very big issue for people, you know, really wanting to open to abundance. So something you could set up would be possibly abundance, um, yourself, and uh, mother and father, for example. And in setting those up, you would explore what is the relationship and what are the patterns that are there inherently in that system, and then what creates healing with those patterns. So there's different ways of doing it, but in general, with constellation work, that's what you're doing, is you're exploring those specific patterns through this, um, what seems like role modeling in the constellation. Very powerful work, and it's amazing the, the depth and the detail of the material that comes up. Wow, that would be extremely powerful to really start understanding the patterns that you mentioned your, your family had, and what patterns did my mother have that I'm having, or what patterns did my father have, or what patterns did I learn from school, or what patterns did I learn from some other social environment, so that we can choose whether or not we want to continue working with them, or so we can become mindful of what things we've accepted as truth that might not be benefiting us. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. The, it, it's, it's amazing to watch in a constellation how it seems like it's just an event that happened to a grandfather or a parent or, or whatever, but it's amazing how the contraction that someone goes through when they go through an experience like that can oftentimes be something if they don't do what, what you were recommending earlier where you really become present, work through it, and then it becomes a gift. If, if we respond by just shutting it out, which is so common in our Western culture, uh, to just shut something else out and try to move beyond it, uh, if instead, if, if someone does that in a family unit, then it's amazing how that influences everything, everybody, you know, in very, very deep, uh, uh, intimate ways. So, yes, it addresses all of that. Wow, and, and shutting, shutting that aspect out and trying to shut down those parts can, in my, in my case, not necessarily in anybody else's case, but when I was younger, um, it caused a lot of confusion and depression and anxiety, panic attacks, because I was trying to deny something that happened in my life or I was trying to not look at it and I was just trying to get on with my life and look towards the future rather than looking at the past. Mm -hmm. And not having those entanglements, those family patterns healed, you have a little tainted view on how to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, exactly. So can you tell a little bit on, on how do our family patterns affect how we move forward in the world as leaders? Yes, very, very important as leaders. Uh, oftentimes, again, in our culture, you look at Western civilization, the, the, uh, when we think of a leader, we oftentimes think of someone who's ahead of everybody else and telling people what to do and organizing things. You know, it's a, it's a very common perception in our culture. And really, we're more and more, we're moving into a way, a way of being a leader that is more circular leadership, more leading through example more working in, in a combination with others uh, as a leader. And so we can't really do that if we're operating from old wounding. So for example, I mean, you oftentimes see a CEO or a manager um, or a leader of some type in, a, in an organization, and because of the wounding they went through as a child, like, like let's say abandonment, then they're stepping forward and working with others is trying to get that un, unmet need um, uh, met through the people that they're working with, through their clients, and so forth. So in order to be, they, they might appear to be a strong leader uh, just by being, you know, uh, an A personality, but really the impact that they're having on others and the change that they're having, uh, both uh, on, a, on a, um, a more finite level with an organization or people they're working with, but also on a global level. I mean, we, we impact each other, I think, very intimately um, by how we show up through example. And so by becoming more heartful and present and connected and, uh, and acknowledging that we all have wounds, we all have issues, and not needing to be above that, you know, there's a number of things that you can see in very healthy leadership that looks different. And you can really only get to that place when you heal and start addressing the underlying patterns. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's, uh, it's a band-aid. You know, it's something that's changing things on the surface, 
but really not changing things internally so it impacts how we show up for others and how we show up for ourselves. Exactly. And that's really a, a huge part of being an effective leader rather than an ineffective leader. And you were mentioning earlier about how, let's say, a manager who might have abandonment issues shows up compared to a manager who doesn't have abandonment issues. Could you give us some ideas on what would be the difference between um, uh, an individual that might be showing up as a leader who might have wounds that they have not resolved yet, but they don't know about these wounds or these patterns that they haven't resolved? How might they show up compared to somebody who has done the personal work and realized they had patterns? Yeah. Um that's a very good question. A lot of clients that I work with, um, there's, a, there's a recent example that I can think of that really exemplified what we're talking about, um, where there's um, the, he, uh, very much an A personality and very, very gifted in many ways, um, but because there was such a need to try to appear strong and not appear weak, the response with anyone, uh, any of the people that he worked with, the uh, employees, it was trying, trying to be over them. Uh, trying to be stronger than them, and really not honoring where they were coming from, what insights they had to offer. And so it was actually having both with clients and with employees, people leaving because they, were, they felt like they were being pushed too much. And instead of, like, the, there's the idea of consultative sales rather than, you know, high-pressure sales. And so really in the process of, a, of us working together and him uh, exploring those different uh, patterns that were there, he was able to see that, it was really coming from, from these deeper places, a lot from his father, uh, and was able to work through those and really shift the way that he was showing up so that he was actually feeling more relaxed and settled himself, uh, more connected, uh, more willing to allow himself to be seen, and it softened the environment with, with his clients and with his employees so that they were feeling like they were being seen and connected with. And then they were more willing to do their own work. Uh, to they, they wanted to work for them rather than feeling like they were in a conflictual relationship. So it completely changed the dynamics and actually, uh, ironically, gave him more power in that way. Wow. And that's so normal and so typical of results of when individuals who are stepping into their leadership role or who are taking the stand to start making that global impact, that they're able to start moving forward and by one of the, the, the consequences is they actually gain more power through empowering others. Yeah, exactly, exactly. A beautiful lesson for all of us. And, and um, yeah, I, th and I think an important point to bring up, we talked a little bit about it before, but uh, we all have wounding, you know, so it's not a, a matter of, trying to get to a place where we're perfect. In fact, I think that is wounding in and of itself, you know, the, the part that wants to be perfect. There's something that happens when we allow ourselves space to work through what we're working through that releases something inside and makes us more effective as leaders stepping forward. And I think that's one of the most important things we can do for ourselves and for our clients. Exactly. That is one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves and for our clients is to take that first step and how might somebody benefit in work in their work or in their life if they came to you for a consulting session or if they decided to go through a program at Art of Heartful Living? Yeah, the, the, um, it, it depends on what they bring to the table. Uh, so sometimes I have people come who are very much exploring business and they want to become more effective leaders and more effective in leading their company, for example. And I have some people who come who uh, want a kind of a broader perspective. They want to work with their leadership, but they also want to work with relationship and other dynamics. And it's really flexible work and can be used with whatever people want to explore. Uh, but, but basically what we would do is we'd have an intake process and really explore these deeper pieces through constellation work and energy work primarily. And, and what I like to do is work in tandem in partnership with the person that I'm working with. So it's very much an exploration. It's, uh, it's exploring together. It's asking questions. There's an inquiry process as part of it. And at the end, what I really want to support the, uh, my client in doing is really connecting with the deeper patterns themselves 
and getting some key tools so that they can use those tools so when the pattern comes up again, they know how to respond to it. To me, it's really about empowering the, the people that I work with uh, so that they have the tools themselves to work through things and then help others from that place. Wow, that's really important. Can you give us a couple of different tips on what somebody might be able to utilize or take home today before they get prepared to maybe talking to you, some things that they might have to think about? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great question. I think, for one thing, I think our bodies are brilliant. There's a, there's a part of our bodies and our subconscious that are really guiding us along the entire time uh, and showing us with neon flashing lights uh, what really serves us. So one, one important thing that we can notice is if we were talking earlier about really feeling the emotions that we're moving through, uh, notice what you feel in the center of your body. You know, so anyone at home can do this also. If you just check in right now and breathe in and notice what you feel in the center, and especially through your grounding below, notice what you feel. And so the first response that people will oftentimes say is, well, I don't feel much of anything, or I feel a little bit disconnected. And that's, for me, that's, a, that's actually a very, very important sign. That's a great uh, tip to get for ourselves. It, it tells us that we've done something to separate ourselves out from what we're feeling. And it's just a reminder for us to, to breathe in, really become present and connect. And the, the, the wording that I like to use, it's, it's like giving yourself a big internal hug. And, uh, and really become aware of any of the pieces that are there, even if it feels like a negative piece, even if it feels like fear or judgment or, or whatever that might be, holding a loving space for that as well and just being with it, and then notice what happens with it. So instead of trying to be over it, just being with it for a little bit, and that can go, just doing that as a daily uh, practice can help hugely you know, with people. Absolutely, so just taking in a deep breath, and coming into just breathing into us, ourselves, I mean, I'm assuming you'd close your eyes. I like to close my eyes when I'm looking inward because I imagine my eyes going in the opposite direction, not that they actually do. <laughs> and, then, and then checking it, what do you feel? And, and if you feel absolutely nothing, if there's just like this stagnantness, there's some kind of a disconnect between you and your feelings. Yes. And... If you're, if you're feeling something that maybe you're not, you don't want to feel like fear or judgment or some other emotion that you put some kind of a label on, just sit with it, just be with it, and, and then allow it to just be. And when you can allow an emotion or a feeling or something to just be without trying to stuff it or be over it, you actually give it a voice so that it can let go. Yeah, beautiful. And, and again, I think it brings back to the brilliance of whatever the larger, um, higher power, spirit, nature, whatever people want to believe, there's something larger than us, and there's some brilliance inside. And it's amazing how our bodies, our psyches, our emotions can heal themselves when we just give them a chance, when we are inclusive. It's a big thing in constellation work, being inclusive, just holding space for everything. Yeah. Wow, that is fabulous. So could you share a couple of success stories that some, some of the individuals that you're celebrating that may have been a former client or yourself or something you're celebrating right now? Yeah, uh, there's um, a recent client that I worked with. Um, she's a brilliant artist, really does amazing work, very, very creative. And... Um, and was having some challenges with, with money issues and really stepping out into the world with some of the business ideas that she had that would support her artwork. And, uh, and it's not because she doesn't uh, have the, the gifts as a business person. All of that is there. It was more of something internal that was catching and blocking. Uh, so we did a constellation, and without going into a lot of the details, it went back to the maternal side of the family with, with some very untimely difficult deaths that happened and it cascaded down through the family and his mother or I'm sorry her mother in particular um, was was really impacted by this and so her experience of her mother was very much of being distant and not being there so there's a way that what we can do in systems children need the love so she was turning back and focusing on 
trying to get the love and subconsciously there was a tape that was playing that was telling her if I let go of trying to fix this, trying to put my energy here and I open up fully to myself, then I'm leaving the possibility of getting love from my mother. You know, it's just how children work. They're, we're, we're trying to get safety, trying to get love. And, uh, and just in realizing that and allowing herself to turn and really feel the love and the strength from her mother and father and then being able to look forward rather than looking backward in the family lineage and trying to change things, uh, it really dramatically shifted the way that she was able to show up and, and uh, really opened her so that a lot of the fears weren't coming up in the same way uh, and ended up being a lot more successful in that way. Wow, and that's so typical of individuals who are doing the inner work is you can have all of the tools, you can have all of the skills, you can be doing everything right according to the experts to make your business go. And if you keep hitting up against that wall, if you keep hitting up against that financial glass ceiling, if your income's going up and down like a yo-yo, there's a pattern that you have that's playing out on a subconscious level that you may not be aware of. And being able to find that pattern, become aware of it, is, is a part of the process that you have. And then instead of trying to squash it or ignore it, you be with it. And then from there, you start healing from it. And it, these patterns, like you, you mentioned, might not even be your own. And that's the case that I've, I've discovered in my lineage and my family, but also with the thousands of individuals that I've worked with, is that a lot of times they are trying to, they're trying to rack their mind on where did this pattern come from, and they don't know because they don't have that piece of the history. Their grandfather or grandmother may have passed who knew that knowledge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we can move forward from that, from our past and from our history, into ourselves without those patterns playing havoc on our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah, wow. I like to call it a, a linchpin pattern because once we move that one pattern, then it's amazing how many other things that were not quite on in our lives the way that we wanted them, all of a sudden everything opens up because we address the core thing. Exactly. Exactly. And that's so important in your work is to being able to address those, those patterns and then ha it's a domino effect, but a good domino effect, not a bad domino effect. Right. Right. Well, how can individuals get a hold of you and, and, I, you also have a free complimentary gift that you would like to offer our audience. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that and how individuals can get that free gift? Yes, I'd love to. Yeah, I would like to offer a free 15-minute consult. Um, that would, there's an intake form as part of it, so you'll provide some information on your family and so forth. And what I can do in the 15 minutes is really uh, uh, tell you briefly, here are some key things that might be behind some of the patterns showing up. Uh, here's what we might do in a constellation with it. So it can give you, it, it provides a little bit of healing in and of itself, uh, but also gives you an idea of what a constellation might entail. And then from there, if people want to set up a, a constellation session, then I'd be happy you know, to do that as well. But the 15 minutes can be very valuable uh, in and of itself. And so you can reach me through James at artofheartfulliving.com. Uh, my website as well, www artofheartfulliving.com uh, and both of those will take you to that uh, to that offer and would be very happy to talk to you about that. Fabulous. So it's your name, James, J-A-M-E-S at artofheartfulliving.com and that's A-R-T-O-F-H-E-A-R-T F-U-L-L-I-V-I-N-G dot com. Yes, thank you. Smart to, to spell it out. <laughs> yes. Well, we have a lot of listeners who are driving, so if you're driving, please just listen to this when you're not. And write down um, Artful Living, that's A-R-T of O-F, Heartful, H-E-A-R-T, full, F-U-L, living, L-I-V, I-N-G dot com. And you can get a hold of James at his email. And you can also get a hold of James at his website. So 
thank you for being a phenomenal guest and giving us the tips so that we can understand what kind of patterns we might have and what exactly is preventing us from really putting our gifts out into the world and stepping into that power. Um, is there one last tip that you would like to leave our audience with before we say farewell? One last tip. Um, yes, I'd say uh, I think one of the most important things that we're, that we're dealing with in our culture right now is a lot of polarity. And so I would say that as well as really uh, the healing of the polarity uh, starts within us. And so again, the idea of inclusiveness, uh, really giving ourselves um, the, the beautiful gesture of holding space for both sides and noticing when we get into that place where we feel a lot of charge, because charge is oftentimes a reflection that we're going into that polarized state. When we're in a more open, uh, relaxed, connected state, it feels different in the body. So again, another way of using the body as a tool to show us when we're going into one or the other. Wow. Thank you for that fabulous tip. And thank you for being on the Wealthy Wednesday show. An absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, Lucy. And I uh, knew it would be great because I uh, loved our conversations and the work that you do. So it's really an, uh, an honor to be here. Thank you. Fabulous. So I'd like to thank you, my audience, for listening to the Wealthy Wednesday show. You are the main reason why I produce this every single week. I have you in mind every week, all throughout the week so that I can provide you with top experts in their field so that you can bring your gifts out into the world so you can have the impact, so you can make more money, have more freedom, and more joy. I'd love it if you would leave me some comments. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com, Wealthy Wednesday Show, and you can get a hold of me at my website at lucymcmonicle.com. That's L-U-C-I. M-C-M-O-N-A-G-L-E.com. And you can get some special free gifts and goodies it's from my website. And it'll give you the idea of when my book is going to be produced. So until next week, abundant blessings. Thanks for listening to the Wealthy Wednesday Show with Lucy McMonagle. That's on every Wednesday. Join us next time for more inspiration and empowerment from various topics and expert guests. To personally contact Lucy McMonagle, visit L-U-C-I-M-C-M-O-N-A-G-L-E dot com. That's LucyMcMonagle.com. Until next time, many blessings.